Hey guys, Peter Hurley here. I'm a headshot photographer in New York City and I've spent the last 18 years running a headshot business. And then about six years ago, I started teaching photographers how to do it. And for me, the most important thing is having a wonderful product, but also making sure you know how to market yourself. Marketing is crucial. So the printing company Moo reached out to me and they wanted to commission me to do a little video about marketing and how I get my clients, how I keep them coming back and how I get them to refer clients to me. So that's what we're gonna do today. I love teaching photographers how to take better headshots. And over the years I've been able to do that and I've seen people take their work from a mediocre level to rock star status. But I've also seen the same people not be able to get people in front of their camera because they don't know how to market. When I'm working with somebody, it's a big deal. Like they're paying a pretty penny to be with me. I better treat them right. And I think this is where your marketing starts because you want them to advocate for you when they leave here. But I also want to give them an experience. It's not just a headshot session to me. I don't want them to ever forget it. All right, let's say your client's walking in the door. There has to be an immediate connection. You've gotta work on it. You've gotta figure out how to mesh with their personality and get to know, and it's just people skills. Connect with them as a human being. I never talk photography, I never coach them before they're in front of the camera. It's gonna produce a performance-based anxiety when they're hanging up their clothes. Why would I do that? So one of the things I do, I actually call this the chameleon approach. You, if you guys have ever seen anything that I do before, I'm very animated, I've got a lot of energy, I'm, uh, I'm loud and I'm usually a little bit rambunctious. So if somebody comes in is very timid and shy and I behave that way, I don't think it's gonna help the picture. So I understand that I have to read that person. It's very, we have to use our intuition to understand that we need to change our personality and mesh with the people that come in. I could change back as I get good pictures or as that rapport's built, I could become myself. But if I'm like jumping up and down like a maniac in here and somebody walks in and they're timid and shy, it's not gonna get me where I need to be. So I need to understand that. I need to curtail my personality to mesh with my clientele when they walk in the door. And vice versa, if you're a quiet, shy person and somebody loud and obnoxious walks in, you've gotta kinda amp up your energy, otherwise they're gonna get bored with you. So guys, today I have Jenna coming in and she is actually a photographer. So what am I gonna do? My goal is to get an amazing picture of her for her marketing purposes. Hey, how are Hello. you? Hi, Hi, I'm Peter. I'm Jenna, nice hey, to meet nice you. Hey, nice to meet you, thanks for coming by. Yeah, thanks for having Did me. Did you bring clothes? There's Did you bring a couple stuff? out there. Really, bring yeah. them in and hang okay, up on okay. here. All right, cool. Guys, so when Jenna walked in, she was my number one focus, right? Immediately, everything's gotta stop. You gotta pay attention to your client and they walk in the door and boom, game on. What'd you get? What'd you, I what mostly you get? will probably wear this shirt. You got black on. Yeah. All right, you Is got that, another couple shirts. You yeah, got a dress. I All right, also have cool. white pants if I need those. White pants? Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. I like the nose ring. Thanks. And the teeth are beautiful. Thank How did you. you whiten those suckers or what's going on there? Um, genetics, I think. It's really beautiful <laughs> smile. Okay, Thank cool. You. Thank awesome. you. So a couple things are going on. One is I'm reading her energy. I'm seeing how she meets and greets me, how anxious she might be or how comfortable she might be. I'm starting to gauge her personality to decide upon how I will actually speak to her. And I'm also looking at her attributes, like her features, about her face and her the part in her hair and which side of her face I want to photograph and which expression she makes before she steps in front of the camera because cameras tend to change people. I think the key component to anything that I do is I'm always searching for a common thread. So when I get somebody's name or I find out who they are, or what they're about, you know, I'll use Google, I'll find out what they do or what they need these pictures for. Uh, whatever that may be, whether they're an actor or they're you know, uh, running a business or they work for a company or they're, they're doing their own personal brand. And once I find that out, then I can key in on that and try and find these little common threads that may come up. So with Jenna, she's a photographer, that's easy, right? What kind of pictures do you normally take? Um, I love taking shots of people, mostly. Uh -huh. Great. Um, I'm a little bit more awkward in front of the camera but I like being behind it and shooting uh -huh. other people. Like most photographers, yeah. that's all right. I'll do yeah. my best to chill you out behind the camera, okay. in front of my camera. Cool, we'll it's a lot different being today. on the other side. Oh so, yeah, Yeah. oh yeah. So now it's time to take pictures, all right? And this is the cornerstone of what we're doing. Like if we don't have a good product, we have nothing to market. Let's talk about my lighting. 
The one thing that means a lot to me, guys, is that I developed this lighting. It's simple. It's just, I consider it beauty lighting. It's very, very easy, so you're gonna see it. But the, the thing that's the most important is that most people coming in and off the street have never been in lighting like this. So all I do is I point the camera at them, I press the button, I've got a beautiful base to start from, and then I start working from there to direct them and pull out their personality. All right, I've got Jenna here and I've got her in front of my lights. This is a simple triangular setup. It's based off of lighting that I developed with Westcott. This is a Westcott Peter Hurley Flex Kit. This is a one by three, this is a one by three, and this is a one by two. You do not need this kind of lighting, but if you have a similar kind of so light source and can keep your lights really close to your subject, it makes it really soft and really nice. And I happen to use three sources to kind of create that light that kind of wraps around my subject's face. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, I like it very flattering and very simple and, and flat and beautiful. Very limited on the shadows. That's what I'm trying to get at. So as you'll notice, I, I've got my lights really close to Jenna. I like my lights close to Jenna because using the inverse square law, we like the light to fall off really nicely and the softer the light is, the closer, the bigger the source, the closer it is. If I move it back, the sources are getting smaller which is making my light more harsh. And that's gonna really kind of mess with my lighting. This is really my beauty light. The closer, the better. If she's too close, we overdid it. So there is a sweet spot, and I think I've got her there right now, which, which is the spot just a bit behind where these three lights converge. So this is the style that I advertise on my site. If you see all my work, it's all shot like this. I say, I keep it very specific. So when somebody goes to my site, sees my work, says, I like that image, I can recreate it. That's great, this is what I do. And then they come in here and I shoot them in the same setup. What you see is what you get, people. You certainly don't have to copy my style. You can create your own style, but you obviously need a quality product. You need something that's consistent that you can, you can do over and over and over again for a number of people and people coming to you know what they're getting. So when you market this product, you're marketing something that you can replicate. All right, we could go down the path of, of delving into this lighting or my direction or all that stuff, but I've done a bunch of tutorials on that and you can look at those. You basically understand that you need a soft, flattering, beautiful light to work with, to market, and it's gotta be consistent. And you need to know how to pose your subject, but I've done a bunch of videos on that and you can look them up on YouTube. All right, so we've got our lighting down. Our lighting's not gonna change. We're gonna tweak it a little bit from person to person, but now I've gotta get that picture. How do I do that? I've gotta create this experience for my subject. I've gotta get them rolling. I've gotta get their juice flowing. I gotta make sure that I'm capturing images that are engaging and that are gonna create an experience for her so that she leaves and she goes, number one, that was an amazing time. Number two, I got amazing pictures. Number three, I gotta tell my friends about this. And number four, hopefully she'll come back. So the first thing I have to do is make sure she's gonna get comfortable in front of my camera. When people get in front of cameras, one of four things happen. They either own it, they pose, they diminish, or they avoid. People that avoid the cameras do not wanna be there. Guess what, they still need, to need pictures for their marketing purposes. You're the one that's gotta chill them out and make sure you run them through this, these stages so that they own it, they enjoy it, they get, they get that experience so that they forget about the camera and they become putty in your hands. How do we do that? What I believe the number one thing is to relax your subject, chill them out and have them work with you is your confidence behind the camera. If you're a confident individual behind the camera and you're directing them properly, it is gonna make them forget about that camera. And that is key. You're gonna stand up real straight. You can imagine that there's a hook in the top of your head and attached to a string that's pulling up to the ceiling. And then you're gonna imagine that there's a string between your nose and the lens and I'm making it shorter. So imagine I'm pulling that string. Yes, like that, and your shoulders are back. And your chin's down a little bit and your smile's coming out already. You're gonna make it easy on me. Oh my gosh, we're already firing on all cylinders. So my work's very dependent on the client's attitude into the camera and towards the camera. So at the beginning of the session, chances are they're not gonna be as relaxed as at the end of the session. So in the beginning, I might not be getting the shots that I really want. I don't let them know that. We don't need to let them know that. We need to give them positive reinforcement that they are doing well. I would never ever say, you know, no, that didn't work. No, that did try that. No, yeah, you're really not getting there. Sorry, no, uh-uh, nothing. I got nothing here. No, you're gonna be, you're trying to 
encourage them the entire time so they become more and more confident so they get better and better and better in front of the camera. I like to say this. Imagine when they first get in front of your camera, they're fragile. Imagine they're like a fine piece of silk, right? And you're trying to build that up and you want to build that silk into a string and you want to build that string into rope and you want to build that rope into a chain. By the time they're a chain, you can say anything to them, you can do anything with them, they're confident, they're giving you faces, they're reacting to everything that you're doing. But when they first get in there and they're anxious and they're very fragile, you need to lay, lay low. Lay low, go in slow. Start to build them up by giving them things to do that are simple. Get more complicated as you go. Here's another trick. Go, go like this and shake it and then come down slow, 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 slow. And then jam your forehead towards the camera. There you go. And chin down. See, I don't even have to worry about this smile. Look at this gorgeous smile. What am I doing there? Ah, look at that. Look, I knew those teeth were amazing and those, those eyes were gonna look great in my light. Chin down more than you think. I obviously like to have fun with people when I'm shooting them. One of the things, one of the reasons for that is because if, if you get somebody to laugh, guess what? It just changes their face. If they laugh, their face is gonna turn into a smile and then it's gonna have to go back to rest and be serious again. So just getting that face to change. Also, the people are most relaxed after a big laughter. So I, part of my shtick and the way that I work is that I like people to laugh the whole time. Plus, I like to laugh. Why? It's healthy to laugh the whole time. And we're in a photo shoot situation. If I can create an atmosphere where there's laughter, bonus round. Now, most people won't use big laughter for their marketing shots. They might use it for their family or put it up on their wall or their parents might like it or whatever. But the fact is, is that when they come off that laughter, they're the most relaxed and that's where you get the shots that are really the ones that are going to market them really well. And it's their personality coming out because their brain didn't have a chance to reset and be like, I'm in front of a camera again. No, it's just very real, very engaging. Good. Flare your right nostril slightly for me just so that the, I'm just trying to get a little flare over the, actually it's your left nostril with the nose ring. <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you serious? No. <laughs> ah. All right guys, if you can't have fun, what, I, what can you do? You got to have some fun with it. Part of my workflow is to show my clients as I go, right? I know when I'm getting good stuff. I can't wait to show them. It empowers them and it's the number one teaching tool. So I shoot tethered and humans have the capacity to learn. You never believe this. Like they'll look at the image, they'll know what's wrong. I'll discuss it with them. I'll be like, look, this is good, but you can do this, 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 and this to tweak it a little bit. Get back in there, let's go. And they get back in and they work with me. It's the number one coaching tool. It really gives them an idea of what they're getting when they leave. And if they see something they like, they let their guard down and we get even better stuff. You did it. You're working with me here. We we'll work out. We we'll keep it for fun. I'm laughing, and, and that's hilarious. But you're not laugh. out far enough. But that's okay. It's very real. We don't. We still don't need it. But it's cute. Now watch. If I direct you, now that you've seen them, do you understand that if you're laughing, you have to jam that forehead out? You yes, got it, right? And you that. will go back in there do that. Normally, humans have the capacity to learn, so you're just gonna get better after I yeah, show you, yeah. right? Okay. Just making sure. I love that one. That one's great. I like that one for oh, that one closed I like mouth. Too. I like that one. Oh, that one I kind of like. I like that one a lot. Yeah. You're centered. You're, now that I'm, I'm looking like, at it again, I like it's it. It's really good. Yeah, yeah, that's good too. Guys, you're never going to make a memorable moment if you're making people feel robotic and posed and stiff and uncomfortable. Obviously, you'll feel if that's going on. Photo shoots do not have to be boring. They can be fun. And you got to figure out a way to liven it up. There you go. Give me some brow pressure a little bit. Chin down a little bit. Good. Narrow the distance between your temporal lobe and your esophagus if you can. Hello. <laughs> there we go. I got it. That's, that's it. That's it. That's, it's code for smile. It's part of my shtick. One of the most important things I think as a photographer is what I consider your shtick, which is basically the way you roll. Now, my shtick is my shtick. You can't behave like me and I can't behave like you. Your shtick is developing. Mine is too. I don't think as photographers we ever master direction. I think direction just happens. It's like light. You don't, we don't master light either. Um, you know, but my ability to direct and how I'll direct will be forever changing till I put a camera down, which I probably never will. The thing is, is that your shtick is built in. It's in you. 
It's the way you roll and it, you've just got to start to excavate these ideas that will get people to connect with you on your level in your own way and it's there you don't have to look very far you just got to listen you got to pay attention to the person in front of your camera and you got to be yourself and if you are yourself and figure out a way to create an environment that's engaging for that human being you're not only going to get amazing pictures you're going to get amazing marketing tools and people are going to be excited and they're going to go out of here and they're going to go advocate for you when i first got introduced to jenna you know, you meet a new person. I was trying to gauge her right off the bat and she was a little shy and, you know, anxious maybe to get in front of the camera or be here or be on camera. So uh, I sensed it and I tried to make her as comfortable as possible in the space where we're in. By the end of the photo shoot, you saw she's having a great time. We're knocking out pictures left, right and center. She's seeing stuff that she really, enjoys, she knows she's got the marketing materials for herself that she's gonna use to bring more clientele into her and I was able to create that for her. How cool is that? That's what we do, that's our job, that's cool. She's about to leave, she's got the product that she's gonna create her marketing products from. I, I, I captured that for her. But I've gotta keep myself top of mind. I may not see her for years, so I've got tangible products that I can actually give her that remind her of me. Your clients will actually be so excited coming off a shoot. If you just hand them some business cards, hand them some stickers, hand them any kind of tangible materials that you've made to say, hey, if you know anybody that's in interested in this kind of stuff, throw, throw, give them, give them one of these. And they're gonna be like, oh, of course, this was an amazing experience. I just got the best pictures of my life. You better believe it. Give me more of that. They might even ask you for more. They're gonna do the work for you, get it done. Now we're gonna take a look at some of the physical products that I've had printed by Moo, and maybe it'll give you some ideas of what you could do. All right guys, as you can see, I believe that photographers should have tangible products that they can hand their clients. So today, I'm gonna to upload some new stuff. I've done some stuff in the past. It's really easy through Moo. I get on their site and they streamline the process for me. So I'm gonna show you how it works. Okay, here we go guys. So this is the deal. This is what I'm doing. I'm gonna to go to products. I wanna make new business cards. I wanna make Lux business cards. I like their Lux stock, it feels expensive. We're gonna select a size. I'm gonna select a size here. I'm gonna go with Moo size, a little bigger than standard, which I like. We'll stick with square corners uh, and we're gonna start making them. All right guys, so I actually have an upload uh, design that I'm gonna upload, so I'm gonna click here. However, one of my favorite things about Moo is that I really like their templates in the past, so I have actually gotten a bunch of cards through them by using their templates, which are fantastic, so make sure you look through those suckers as well. Um, but here is my, here's where we're gonna go. We are gonna start with the front. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna go into my site, I'm, I believe my Moo templates are on my desktop and move shots and I'm gonna go move front. And I got my front, there it is. I'm gonna choose that and we're gonna upload it. Fair enough, there it is. All right, so I got my front done. Now, I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna upload my backs and this is unbelievable. They have actually got a feature called Printfinity. It's their Printfinity feature where you can upload up to 50 different backs. So my front can remain the same. My backs can go nuts and then I can have a bunch of different cards that uh, to give out to all my different clients. All right, so I got those cards done. I've got a bunch of different backs to them and I'm really psyched because I'm gonna have some variety there. But I wanna create a different size card. I want a little variety. Maybe I wanna mess around with the, the image on it. So I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna go and go into Moo's site and I'm gonna go to products and I'm gonna pick a square business card. Square's cool. I mean, Square's just different, a little different. Square's business cards. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna go for their Cotton Square business cards. And I'm in here, I'm clicking on it. I can choose my paper and whatever. Let's go, let's go with Cotton, which is actually eco-friendly if that's important to you, just so you know. Now I can upload a full design. I can go to their templates, which are great, but I got my design, I know what I'm doing. So I'm gonna upload my full design. And I'm gonna upload my front. And I'm gonna take this image, which I know I want as my front and then I'm gonna upload my back. All right, now, my, now I can go to my quantity in my paper. We're gonna go with cotton square business cards and I'm gonna get 200 of these suckers and we're good to go. I can review and purchase. I'm in, there's my card. All right, 
We got some cards going, right? One of my favorite things that I love, I know you probably love them too, most people do, are stickers. Like I stick stickers all over the place. And many of you know that I run the Headshot Crew. I coach through the Headshot Crew. And people like to have Headshot Crew stickers. So I'm gonna go into Moo and I'm gonna create some. Watch this. All right, so I'm going down to stickers and I'm gonna make some round stickers. Let's make some round stickers. I like round stickers. Again, you can go through the templates or you can complete a design. I've got a design. Now this is actually gonna be a square, but it's gonna come out round. Watch this, I'm gonna upload a complete design. Look at that. Beautiful, Peter Hurley's Headshot Crew, I love it. Let's choose a quantity, 104 stickers. Oh, I saved five bucks. Let's get a bunch of them. Let's get 416 stickers for 83 bucks. That's a good deal. We're gonna get a load of stickers. All right, review and purchase. We're gonna add stickers. I've got three different items. I've got my Lux cards with my six different backs on them. I've got my square cards with me on them. And I've got my circular stickers. Let's make some rectangular stickers. And we're gonna start making them. Again, we already have a design, but you can peruse their templates and stuff all you want. You get some really cool stuff. And we're gonna, we're gonna upload the design of the sticker. We're gonna go to the front and we're gonna go to this label with the Headshot Crew and all my information on it. And we'll choose it. And now we've got a Headshot Crew sticker that's ready to roll. Choose a quantity. I don't need as many of these as before. Maybe we'll do 200 of these. Add these, we can review and purchase and we can get the stickers. All right, I could put the order in. I cannot wait to get these. It's gonna be a few days and I'll get them. Oh my gosh, look at all this stuff I got. I got my Moo cards, guys. Look at these, these these must be my square. Look at this, this is my square cards. How cool is this? Look at this thing, lovely. I like that the square is so cool and it's it's got that matte finish on it I like. And this is the eco-friendly card. Bonus round, right here. I mean the size is really different which is really unique which is interesting because it'll have you stand out when you hand in a bunch of group of cards and they get the square, it's kind of interesting, it's kind of cool. These must be my Lux cards. Let's check them out. Oh wow, look at this packaging. You gotta love this packaging. Looks pro. Let's take a look at the backs. Wow. Look at that. Now look at this, I got variety. How cool is that? Is that amazing? That's amazing. Guys, the Lux cards are really nice. They got a nice feel to them. They're very stiff and there's, a, there's, a li there's three layers. There's a little black layer in the middle. Uh, which gives you a little nice black border around them, which work, works well with my look. I feel like this is substantial. I feel like you hand this to somebody, it's got some weight to it, you know. It's not just your flimsy, average, everyday business card. It's really nice. The printing looks really nice with my work. I really like it. They did a great rendition of the colors and, and the contrast and everything. There's a real pop to these, which is really nice. All right, guys, now I'm excited. I got, I got my stickers here. These are some labels that I made. These are Headshot Crew. Stick these suckers everywhere. Let's look at these circular ones. These even are even more exciting. Oh my goodness, look at this. I got a sheet. I got a sheet of four of them with a little circle. When you peel them off, we get a little circle out of it. Look at that. Love it. Stick these suckers all over the place. As you can see, guys, I like my business cards and my stickers. I like handing them out to clients and giving them something that's a physical thing that they can actually hold and take with them and give to their friends and family, and hopefully that'll bring some business my way. You may not be a sticker and business card person. Maybe you like sending out postcards, whatever it is, doesn't matter. Just make sure you have a tangible product that keeps you top of mind for your clientele. Very important when you're marketing. Big thanks to Moo for sponsoring this video and having me talk about marketing for photographers. The one thing that I've always felt is really important is the experience of your customer. It's huge, we all know that. The product that you give them is gonna be important for them to market themselves and everything, but the experience is what's gonna have them out there talking about you. You giving them something physical that they can, they can, so that they can give it to their friends and their friends can get in touch with you is huge. I've got one quote that I really stick to when I'm shooting, and I do shoot headshots, but the quote is, I may be shooting their head, but I'm aiming for their heart. And if you continue to touch people in a way through your photography that touches them and, and allows you to touch their heart, you've got something and they're gonna talk about you and they're gonna bring people your way. Keep working on your craft, guys, making those pictures better. Keep working on your customer experience to make it streamlined and make sure people have a good time with you and they'll go talk about your product. And if you're looking for physical products, check out Moo.com.